Hi, this is Alicia Lyon and Sam Bartlett, and our presentation is on bifed condyle. The definition of a bifed condyle is when the head of the mandibular condyle has a vertical notch, depression, or deep cleft in its center. This gives it the appearance of having two heads. The bifurcation can be either in the anterior posterior or in the medial lateral direction. If it has more clefts or bifurcations, then they would be called a trifed or tetrafed, depending on the number. Patients are usually asymptomatic. They are asymptomatic because the bifurcation does not interfere with the normal joint function. Although some patients may have some TMJ dysfunction and even some associated pain. However, most think this is a coincidence and not actually a cause and effect relationship. Clinically, bifed condyle is usually an incidental finding on a radiograph. However, occasionally joint noise or ankylosis may be evident to the clinician. Again, this is thought to be more of a coincidence and not a cause and effect relationship. Bifed condyle is a relatively rare occurrence. Its incidence has been reported to be from 0.018% to 1.82%. There is no predilection for gender location, so it occurs equally in both males and females, and also equally in the right and left condyle. Most cases of bifed condyle are found in patients over the age of 20, however, a full study has not been conducted. Moving on to radiographic findings, first we have location. As it's just an extension of the condylar head, the location is the normal location of the mandibular condyle, so the mandibular fossa of the skull. Again, the edge, as it's just an extension of the condyle, it just looks like bone and it has a well-defined edge. The shape can be of several kinds. First, we have a sagittal splitting of the condylar head, which makes lateral and medial heads of the condyle. On a pentomograph, this looks similar to, to one condylar head being superimposed over the other condyle, but the medial head is usually more anterior than the lateral head, and so you can usually see the anterior border of both of the heads. Now there's a coronal splay in the condyle, then we have anterior and posterior heads formed, and this on a pentomograph looks like a small depression in the middle of the condylar head, sometimes making a heart-shaped condyle. There are also trifed and tetrafed condyles, which have various shapes depending on the orientation of their heads. This pantomograph shows a coronal splitting of the right condyle with anterior and posterior condylar heads and a sagittal splitting of the left condyle with medial and lateral condylar heads. On the left is a picture of a trifid condyle with medial, lateral, and posterior heads, and on the right there is a picture of a tetrafid condyle with the heads in the various positions. Next on radiographic findings is the internal structure. As the bifid condyle is bone, it's the radial opacity of bone. Next is the effect on other structures. Generally with a bifid condyle, only one of the heads is in articulation and the other head is generally out in space, not doing anything. There was one case of a medial lateral oriented bifid condyle where the authors did many CT scans. And in their patient, they saw that there was an enlarging of the glenoid fossa with actually two articulation facets. And there was one condylar head in articulation with each facet. In this case, there's also an enlarged joint capsule and disc, which makes sense to accommodate the two heads. There is a T-shaped disc with a separate limb for each condyle, and a third limb of the disc was interdigitating between the two condylar heads. The authors also noted in this case that the muscles of mastication on the affected side had atrophy and fatty replacement. The next is number. Most time there's only one bifid condyle, and it's ipsilateral, but it's also possible that there's bilateral bifid condyles. There can be trifid condyles. There's been a case of a bifid condyle on one side, and a trifurcated condyle on the other. There's also one case of a tetrafid condyle. And the size of the radiographic finding is a small notch in the condyle to the complete split, splitting of the condyle to the neck or sometimes even lower than the neck. This shows some variations in size. The condyle on the left shows a splitting closer to the neck of the condyle and the condyle on the image on the right shows just a small cleft in the condyle. On to differential interpretation. The first is bifid condyle, obviously. The second is vertical fracture through the condylar head. The third 
differential interpretation is TMJ osteoma, and the fourth interpretation is degenerative joint disease. A vertical fracture often becomes a bifid condyle, so they can look very similar to each other. The difference is a vertical fracture may sometimes need to have surgical intervention, although most of the time surgery is not indicated. Most of the time you can tell the difference between a fracture and a bifid condyle just on conventional radiographs, but if the fracture is really high on the condyle or neck, then you need a CT scan to be able to see the fracture. Also, if there is a fracture, an active fracture, it is usually accompanied with pain, swelling, and possibly trismus. To tell the difference between an osteoma and a bifid condyle can be extremely difficult as they look very similar. So the osteoma has a uniform sclerotic pattern or a sclerotic periphery with a central trabecular pattern. As I said, they both look very similar. The osteoma is very slow growing and may eventually cause TMJ dysfunction. But luckily the treatment of both bifid condyles and osteomas are the same, which is we don't really do anything unless the patient's having really bad symptoms, then we try to intervene, which we'll talk about later. CT scans have been performed to try to differentiate between bifid condyles and tumors. Here is a radiograph of an osteoma, as the arrow is pointing to. As you can tell, it looks very similar to a bifid condyle in this case. And if we needed to be able to know exactly what it was, we could do a CT scan to be able to tell the difference between an osteoma and a bifid condyle. Next is degenerative joint disease. So with degenerative joint disease, there's often an anterior osteophyte that is formed, which is a small beaking on the anterior of the condylar head. And sometimes bifid condyles can look similar in a pantomograph. And there's so many different various shapes that bifid condyles can have that they can sometimes look like there's osteophyte formation. Doing a CT scan has been recommended as the best way to differentiate between bifid condyles and degenerative joint diseases. Here are some radiographs. The one on the right is degenerative joint disease. It has an anterior osteophyte formation. You can see the anterior beaking on the condylar head. The picture on the left is a bifid condyle. As you can see, it almost looks like it has an anterior osteophyte on it. And if you weren't looking carefully, you might mistake it for degenerative joint disease. Usually no treatment is needed because patients are asymptomatic. If they do present with mild symptoms, then you would do conservative TMJ therapy. If they have ankylosis or severe pain, then surgical intervention would be necessary. If a patient presents with a difficult or challenging case for a general dentist, referral to a TMJ specialist or an oral surgeon would be indicated. The TMJ specialist would be best for cases of mild TMJ dysfunction um, an oral surgeon would be indicated for severe ankylosis or pain. They are indicated because it's their area of expertise and they're best able to assist the patient. The urgency of referral would depend upon the severity of the patient's symptoms. The following are the key points of our presentation. With bifid condyle, the patient is usually asymptomatic, causing them no problems. It is usually only clinically evident on a radiograph. The patient may have TMJ dysfunction. Radiographically, the condyle will appear to have a shallow cleft. The two heads can occur in the anterior posterior orientation or in the medial lateral orientation. The lesion is the radial opacity of bone because it is bone. The best treatment is usually no treatment. If symptoms worsen to the point that the patient seeks treatment, then TMJ therapy or surgical intervention would be indicated. This is a list of our references we use for our presentation. The image credits for the presentation. And some more image credits for the presentation. And thank you for listening.